I'm Jeff Fritz with Soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Gabby and Edwin Reinfeld. They are the dynamic duo that is behind the brands Crystal Cable and Siltec, and they are joining me from the Netherlands today where their factory is. Gabby, Edwin, how are you guys? Hi, Jeff. Thank you very well. Yes, we are doing fine. We have a sunny day, which is an exception here in Holland. Oh, so glad to be on your program. Well, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. And we're actually here to discuss a pretty, a pretty amazing accomplishment, and that is 40 years of the Siltec brand. Siltec is experiencing their 40 year anniversary this year. And we, we want to discuss Siltec. It's, it's, it's a very amazing story brand. Uh, I actually have some Siltec cables in my system currently. And uh, so Edwin, the first question is, Take us back a little bit. Tell us about the history of Siltec and how the company began. Yes, well, the company was, uh, the start of the company had to do with two poor audiophiles students that were going to graduate. They had a hobby of hi-fi, but couldn't afford the expensive hi-fi in those days. I think that's a similar story for many brands. Uh, so the idea was build your own loudspeakers by a torn stern table. Uh, uh, built or buy an amplifier and the cables were not seen as an important thing at the time. Um, these two graduates from university started experimenting making their own wires. Uh, they tried different materials and uh, including platinum and copper and silver turned out to, uh, to be the best to their liking. So that was actually the start of Siltec in 1983. Within two years, it became really successful, and in '85 already there was quite a lot of international response. We were, of course, one of the few high-end audio brands in the beginning already, so there were not that many brands as there are today. And silver was quite unique. There were a lot of silver-plated cables. They all had a bright sound, but pure silver wasn't there, and especially not high-purity silver that we already used in the beginning which was made by a Swiss company with high purity. And that gave a very mellow, soft, but still very detailed sound. Um, that was followed in 86 by a fantastic review by, Mar by Martin Columns in Hi-Fi News. In those days, that was one of the few international magazines, uh, which, which was read by audiophiles worldwide. And when both the speaker and interconnect cable became the absolute top with a huge distance, to the uh, runner-up, that really got a, uh, gave Siltec a kickstart. So from there, that was a flat cable, FT12, uh, still rings a bell to a lot of people because it was the first flat cable with expanded Teflon insulation. So that was an invention that our company made and that became more and more successful. Um, and later we added a whole line of other cables uh, to it. Uh, I joined the company myself in 1992, at least then I became CEO of the company uh, before I did work for the company, that was a different story. Um, and with my research background and uh, education in electronics, uh, I decided to put up a, a more research-based program. So until then, it was more or less trial and error, you know, you try different materials, you try different insulation, you try different configuration. It's not bad, it brings you to a certain level, but that level stops at a certain point. And then you need really to go research based because you have to know what am I doing? Why is it different? Why does this material in this situation sound well and not in the other? So to make, uh, to cut the long story shorter, uh, we, uh, set up a lab, electronic lab, we set up um, optical lab and optical had a reason. I wanted to know what was going on on the surface of the conductors uh, and we could, we even have color analyzers. That means that you, uh, a very small spot of metal, you can analyze the color, which also is an indication uh, that can be useful for research. And uh, a couple of years later, we were able to obtain almost a full inventory of the hard disk lab from Philips in Hassel, Belgium, which they moved to Singapore. So they had to buy everything new again. 
And for a fraction of its original price, we could buy a fantastic laboratory. And that gave us the start for magnetic field research because they had this ultra precise American equipment that was able to monster a 3D image of a magnetic field around just anything and for a very high wide frequency range. And that was just ideal for audio. Without that, we wouldn't have been as far as we are now. And then later on, actually, we we went developing more products based on this research. So that gave us clues uh, about the insight of uh, hi-fi. Why is it sounding like this? So we now have a huge database of knowledge about the relationship between, between measurement and audible sounds. So I want to ask you one other question, uh, and, 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 and that's a great introduction to the company. And, and, you know, I've talked to you many times, Edwin, and one of the things that's always been clear, usually we have these conversations in Munich, is that Siltec is very much a, 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 a cable manufacturer, but it's also a research and development company. You guys put a lot of R&D, engineering, and experiments into developing these products. On the flip side of that, I know Gabby's background is in music, and I want to talk a little bit or, or have her talk a little bit about how the sound and the music really affects the product development and the and the cables that you guys actually produce. Gabby, can you can you speak a little bit about your musical background and then how that interacts with the company? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, G growing up uh, in Hungary, I used to be a concert pianist until I was 20 five when I uh, uh, came to uh, to Holland and we got uh, uh, in total five children so next to next to them and uh, uh, and a household it was no much time for uh, you know practicing enough to stay on stage which I am now uh, trying to do again after the kids uh, are now uh, grown up but um, uh, to use my musical background made uh, made sense in the company. Uh, um, musical background uh, gives uh, for the products, for the company, for development, for uh, finish, listening, tuning, uh, a lot of um, um, extra. I think it, quite a few companies have uh, a professional musician on board, and I think that's a kind of mission for me to, uh, you know, all high-end companies try to do the same, um, get uh, that live music experience to the listening room or the, or the, the living room of uh, ourselves, the customers uh, uh, on shows. That's, that's the thing we all try to do. And I think my uh, addition as a musician is there to, uh, um, to get uh, the sound uh, different, to get the sound uh, as close as possible to the live experience. Um, and uh, with listening sessions, with, uh, with uh, um, smart uh, things in development, uh, we really can make differences in, uh, in, uh, in our products. So that would be my mission. And yeah, I used to say that mission is impossible because we never will get that same sound what you get in a concert hall or a jazz bar or a festival or whatever. But as long as we are getting closer and closer, we are, um, yeah, we are good. Well, and, and you know, it really, I think, gives your, your customers a lot of satisfaction to hear that there is the engineering and the research and development behind the products, but then the confirmation that you're on the right track is in the listening and is in how the music sounds. And, you know, I've, I've listened with you before, sat in front of systems, actually one at my home probably about 10 years ago. And I know you have oh, a very- Oh, absolutely. I know you have a very keen set of ears. And so having that confirmation that Edwin's on the right track with the research and development from his engineering team is, uh, I think it gives your customers a lot of satisfaction. Well, the next question that I have, take us to today, what does the company look like uh, give us a little, a, a short uh, uh, summary of the product line and what the company looks like in terms of number of employees and, and such for today. 
So currently we have about 40 people uh, fully employed, uh, employed for our company. Uh, about five of them are working in research. Uh, they're university engineers in various, uh, with various titles. Uh, one of them has a PhD in physics. Uh, the other one is working on a PhD in acoustics and the others have electronic backgrounds. So um, this group of people, we really need to um, apply the technique in such a way that it works. And then we have a big listening team, which is various people, also people from production, actually from all levels in the company. Um, and every time we are amazed again that even people without a hi-fi background, so to speak, can listen perfectly. They may not know the right words or the words as you would describe it from a magazine, but um, that doesn't matter. You know, you, you're not, it's not important if you can say that uh, the, 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 the image is so and so or that you have a very tight base, but people can describe it in their own words. And we always found them to be spot on. So most people can listen very well if they're not hindered by the thought that they would not be good at that, that they need to have golden ears. There's no such thing as golden ears. Maybe a very important statement. Um, I remember one of the first loudspeakers I developed and it was not good, but you know, as engineers, you work hard and you think, well, this is what we worked two years on, so it should be good. And I get a niece of mine and she listened. She says, that's not musical. That's not how, it's not how it should sound like. <laughs> and I said, what's well, not good? Well, the violins are such and so. And she had, and she was a flute player and cellist herself. She still is actually. Um, and it was spot on. And, and what we men then think is, yeah, you know, then we have to work again. We are not finished yet. And yeah. it's funny that in, even now, Gabby being a woman, uh, we have a woman and we have uh, quite a few women in the company, they are usually brutally honest when it's about listening. They don't want to achieve a certain goal, like, yeah, this is great what we have done now, you know? They don't. And that's very useful because it might be in a listening team, which usually is done with eight people at the time, so six to eight, I would say, that um, usually four or five agree, and some people hear something different, which usually is very valuable. And it depends a little bit on the music, if the others will notice that too. So the, f the attention, the focus on what sound means to you is also slightly different between people and slightly different between men and women. And the history of that, of course, lies in the, uh, if we think of people originally being cavemen and that the necessity to survive was equally important for both of us, both species, well, both men and women. But women had a different role, usually next to the children, had to be careful that nothing went wrong, which could harm the children. And the men were usually hunters, so they focused on different aspects of the sound to find their prey. That's to, and these differences are still in our brains today. So it's maybe a lesson for, uh, uh, for some of your listeners. If the man says it's such and so, which is mostly male people that buy it the high end, and your wife's or girlfriend says something different, she's probably right. You know, it doesn't mean that you're wrong, but it's, you miss something that she did here. Yeah. Right. So any, anyway, I, um, a, yeah. a story before when you, when you asked, we also made electronics. We do today, but we always did. And many people may remember that in the beginning, we also produced electronics under the brand name of Sphinx. And we did sell that in 1995 because we no needed more uh more actually more money for development for machines so we decided to sell off the electronics but on the sideline we still kept developing things we still made very special products like a C sepa amplifier in 1998 very long time ago 25 years now and the people now pay more for the second-hand product than it was the original price of 25 years ago because it was really a unique product and we have done that over time. We made a glass loudspeaker, not because we wanted to make a glass loudspeaker. You see it in the right corner next to Gabby's head. Oh, you see the yeah. first prototype actually of the glass loudspeaker. 
Um, and that came from our start with multi-physics software. We used Comsol and some other programs in those days at the help of a, a university professor who had already some experience. Uh, coming from MIT, he knew what to do and how to model acoustics. And, in the, and so we were able to improve loudspeakers in a way that you were not relying on dampening mat material, which usually is the cure to already a bad thing. So if you have resonating panels, yes, you can dampen them by adding on dampening material. But if you design it right, at least that was the challenge, you probably don't need any dampening material and you can get a much better sound. The, the response is much quicker of the speaker. The distortion is lower, it's much more natural. And as a proof of concept, that became this unique loudspeaker um, that, that you see in the corner for under the brand name of Crystal Cable. Uh, maybe that needs some explanation. 40 years Siltec and next year it's 20 years of Crystal Cable. Crystal Cable basically also came from research. We were able to improve conductivity of certain metals. And we, when we did that, we could make a miniature cable, very, very thin, and uh, run two and a half kilowatts through it. So we showed that off to a lot of distributors and they all said, it's fantastic, this is unique. How can the bead 0.9 millimeter diameter, two and a half kilowatts? It got warm, but not too hot. You still could touch it. But the interesting thing was, uh, nobody believed that that would be a market. So our thought was, for Gabby and me, and I'm introducing Gabby actually, Gabby said, as she explained before, that as a, a former concert pianist, you cannot travel the world with children, because we were a bit conventional in our household. I worked and Gabby had to take more of the care of the children, I would say. But she still studied. Um, and when this opportunity uh, was risen, she said, is that something I can start with? Because if, you know, in market, if 80% like big, heavy, impressive looking cables, there probably is 20% who thinks of exactly the opposite. And that's with a lot of things in life. You know, it's not that everybody likes the same thing. So that was actually very briefly the start of Crystal Cable. So with Siltec, more or less, yeah, sorry, I will, um, because I will talk longer than, than we have time <laughs> for. So maybe Jeff, it's good to, uh, to interrupt me here. Well, I wanted just to, to mention one of the things that I have so appreciated about you two through the years is your enthusiasm for your work. You know, it, it, it is always so impressive to me, particularly when we meet in Munich, that you guys are, you guys have just as much enthusiasm, if not more, today than you had when I met you the first time 15, 20 years ago, whatever it was. And that is just, it's infectious. It makes people it makes people like me want to explore your products because I know that you are just putting your heart and your soul into those products, into the development. And uh, you know, I know that everyone around the world that that knows you guys and has experienced Siltec uh, and Crystal Cable products believes in the same thing. So the last that does bring me to my last question. I want to ask you guys, what does the future hold? You know, we're talking about Siltec, but we've discussed Crystal a little bit as well. What does the future hold as far as the rest of 2023 and take us into the future, you know, five, 10 years? What, 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 what are kind of the big overarching plans that you guys have for the brand? Well, um, I will let the new products uh, for Edwin, but I would like to say, and thank you for, uh, for your warm words about us. Um, uh, the company and uh, and uh, uh, the production and the management is going uh, very well uh, and uh, renewing. That means um, we are there with experience and also in the production. We have people who work there 23, 24 years with all uh, uh, the knowledge and experience they, uh, they gained. And slowly but uh, steadily the the whole group is uh, is getting younger and younger so we have a very um, smooth uh, transition from having the people with the experience in the same time the young ones so they can they can gain the experience they can learn they can uh, uh, they can uh, see uh, uh, the old products the new products uh, and that's the same in production is the same in engineering the same in the management 
We have uh, two of our uh, children in the company now, two of our sons. Um, and uh, that's even there in the listening team. And that's, that's a funny thing because, uh, you know, um, we are classically um, uh, trained and love classical music, also, of course, jazz and other things. But uh, having these young people in the listening team, really young, like in the 20s, they, uh, uh, they bring their own uh, musical uh, preferences. And that's very special for, for uh, listening, for uh, tuning the products, because we try to get also uh, customers in younger age. So uh, the preferences of the 50 plus uh, customers um, are there, but with, with our young uh, listening team and, and tuning the, the, the products uh, in, a, in a different way, we hope to gain also uh, younger customers and younger uh, Siltag fans. So that's also something for the future. And now Edwin can explain some future products uh, and plans. Yeah, well, basically it's simple. Based on our current philosophy that we have to be able to measure it, that we listen to it, it should outperform anything we have done before if we introduce a new line. Otherwise, we just don't bring it on the market. That's also the cause why we can have our products about 10 to 12 years in the market. So that's the lifespan of our product. Um, you can also see that the second hand market for both of our brands is the highest paid uh, brand. So you pay very high prices for uh, even 20 year old Siltex or 30 year old Siltex and 10 year old crystal cables. That is a proof of that even after a long time with new equipment, new high resolutions of recordings, our concept is still valid. And I think that comes from our basic research that we are doing. And that leads us to having quite a deep insight on what's going on and our love for music and uh, my love for instruments and, and musical instruments. So the combination of technique and uh, music I think makes us strong. I mean, Gabby's very modest. She, she didn't tell you she played with Ada, uh, Abado in Scala uh, when she was young. So it was a serious level. That means we are fanatic. We want to achieve. If it can be done better, we will do it better. And that's actually holds the future for our company. And that I'm trying to teach to the younger generation how important that is. That quality is everything because there are a lot of companies that can do things so so mediocre plenty of it so if if you want to have something low cost you have a lot of good products to choose from if you want something exceptional all the people involved have to be very special so we will see even higher range of cables in the future from both our brands as well as loudspeakers and with the same kind of um, fanatism behind it we have found many new ways to improve acoustics, to make them room independent. And that is thing, a thing going on for the last 15 years. And that's accelerating at the moment because we have a lot more insight about what's happening in your living room. And that's a very special thing. And because of that, we are quite confident that if we come with a line of loudspeakers, in the near future that that will be instantly successful because it does things that so far are not being addressed so our future is just try try better work harder and try to achieve more than what you uh, your original goal was if you reach the goal try one more i think you do the same in sports let's say you run the, the 100 meters in uh, uh, 12 seconds and then you try to get it under 11 and a half or whatnot uh, present level of course is under 10 seconds and every tenth of a second more is an achievement and that's the same in hi-fi and interesting enough you hear all these differences as gabby said before um uh, the, there's a big difference between life and a room but that's a double edged sword because sometimes in a room it can sound more real than in a living than in a, a concert hall 
because what is a concert hall for classic music that's clear if it's a, a big um, happening you know going on outdoor with big pa speakers you get a totally different experience to have all these different situations in your room is very very difficult and uh, we are trying to see what makes it to your brain that it like it sounds right that you have the idea that it is real because that is the most important thing yeah well you know it it, it gives me so much confidence in the current and the the coming soon siltech products because with the research and development and the listening panels, you just know that when you get a Siltec product, it's probably gonna be ahead of its time. You know, it's gonna be the very latest in, uh, in your research and development, but some of that may actually be, you know, a number of years ahead of what you see uh, just in the industry in general. And so I think that's another reason that the product lifespan, you know, 10 to 12 years, these products are not simply outdated quickly. Uh, because they are right at the right. at the very current uh, edge of the art when they're launched, and therefore the, the 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 lifespan of the product can go on and on. Well, Edwin and Gabby, listen, I really appreciate you guys being here today and celebrating uh, Siltech and and also with the helping of Crystal Cable in there as well. And I just have to let everyone know that uh, you know Soundstage will be at Munich's High End this year. We look forward to catching up with Crystal Cable and Siltech because we just know that you guys have some surprise, <laughs> something you're going to launch, and, uh, and we're keen to see what that's going to be. So uh, I'm glad you guys have sunny weather there. And, uh, you know, we have sunny weather here too in uh, coastal North Carolina. And uh, I just want to wish you guys a, a great rest of your week. And thank you again for being here.